All right, so I've had a few people ask about number 20. So we're gonna take a look at number 20. I'm gonna change some numbers so that you have to apply it um, for yourself to the actual problem, but we'll give the same idea. So number 20 is all about degrees of freedom for the F-test. So you have a two factor, uh, so a factor A and a factor B. Factor is the word that they often use here simply to describe an independent variable or a predictor inside the context of ANOVA. So you have, here they say, you know, you have two levels of factor A and three of factor B in the problem. We're gonna make up a different example, right? So I'm gonna use a different number of levels. So we're gonna say you have three and four levels instead of two and three. And it says uh, you have 10 participants in each treatment condition, okay? So imagine we say we have eight participants per condition, okay? So now the first thing to think about is what is the, you know, what is the data breakdown we have? And maybe the easiest way to think about this is to go ahead and make a table. So if you think about factor A going across and factor B going down, How many levels do we have for each? Well, we've got level one, level two, and level three for factor A. And we've got one, two, three, and four for B. So we're gonna have a one, 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 two. So all of these are gonna have data and each of these conditions is gonna have eight people, right? So we're gonna have eight in each of these conditions. Now you could also quickly solve how many conditions are there and the number of conditions we have, of course, is going to be solving our design statement. So we have a three by four design and three times four is 12. So we have 12 conditions right there. See, that's 12 conditions. So if we have eight per condition. We can do 12 times eight and our total sample size is going to be that. And we can also check that that is what we got with our breakdown by summing all of these. And you'll see that it's the same answer. So our total sample size for the entire study is 96. Our N, what I would call sub J, which is number per group, is going to be eight. Uh, we have a total of 12 groups in this study. So now we need to figure out the degrees of freedom. So the F ratio, if you remember, the F test is the mean squares between divided by the mean squares within. And a mean square is always a sum of squares divided by a degree of freedom. So that means that in the numerator, there is a degree of freedom for the top, the numerator, right, degree of freedom, and the denominator degree of freedom. The numerator is whatever effect you're testing. So if I'm testing factor A, it would be the degrees of freedom associated with A in the numerator. The denominator is always, is always the within or residual degree of freedom. So it would be whatever my error term or within degree of freedom term is. So we can figure these things out quickly. Your book talks about the degrees of freedom using a K notation, I think, where K is the number of categories. Uh, it's basically the number of levels minus one for each independent factor. So if I have three levels for factor A, then factor A for the degrees of freedom, now let's not do a minus sign, the factor A degree of freedom would be three minus one which is two. If I have factor B degree of freedom, four minus one is its levels, which is three. The interaction, which it doesn't ask for, but we'll practice, the interaction is always the DF for A multiplied by the DF for B, which here would be two times three, which is six. So that is my total model degree of freedom here, right? And so, I can use these and they would be the numerator degree of freedom terms for testing all of these effects respectively. Now the denominator would always be the within. How do we get the within? Well, the within, there's a bunch of ways you can get to it. Whatever works best for you is fine with me. Perhaps the easiest way is to think about your total sample size minus A times B right? So up here, we had our total sample size was 96 and our A by B is 12. So our denominator DF term would be 96 minus 12, right? So if we do that, we're going to get 84. 
And so our denominator DF term for each of these tests would be 84 degrees of freedom, right? And our numerator would be the degrees of freedom associated with each factor. So that's how you can do uh, a solve for these degree of freedom terms using your sample size information as number 20 asks for in the book.